Sometimes it's usual for the people participating in talk shows to experience weird and unusual incidents, and some of them are harsh, cruel ones. One of these incidents involved a few people in the Jenny Jones show in 1995. First being Scott Amida, a 32 years old bartender from Michigan. The second, a waiter named Jonathan Schmitz, who has a history of suicide attempts and manic behavior. Their mutual friend, a woman named Donna Riley, and Jenny Jones. It was supposed to be a crush reveal at first, but unexpectedly it came to be something tragic. Scott Amidor was born on January 26, 1963, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and lived a pretty typical childhood. After dropping out of high school, he joined the army, but after a while, he decided to work as a bartender. He always loved getting to spend time with tons of interesting new people. When Scott was still serving in the army, he came out to his family as gay, and everyone in his family was supportive of him. In 1995, outside of his apartment complex, Scott met 24-year-old Jonathan Schmitz through their mutual friend, Donna Riley, who also lived in the same building in Michigan. Scott was immediately attracted to Jonathan, and knew he wanted to get to know him more. When he asked Donna what Jonathan's sexual orientation was, she said she wasn't sure. The reasoning for this was because she had only known Jonathan to date women, but none of his past relationships had worked out, and his family asked him a few times before, if he was possibly gay. Scott wanted to shoot his shot in a special way. After seeing some kind of commercial, Scott decided to write, into the Jenny Jones show television, where he would reveal his crush to Jonathan. The Jenny Jones show was premiered in 1993 and distributed by Warner Brothers. In the beginning, the show was intended to follow a similar format to Oprah Winfrey, but then it changed its strategy, where contestants and guests would be put in stressful situations on the spot in front of the rolling cameras for content. The Jenny Jones show took full advantage of this strategy by doing segments where guests reveal dark secrets, such as paternity tests, affairs, and revealing secret crushes, which is what Scott wrote in to do. On March 6, 1995, Scott and Donna appeared during the taping of their episode of The Jenny Jones Show, where Scott was going to reveal his secret crush to Jonathan. Scott talked about the way they met, and his fantasies about Jonathan. After their short interview, Jonathan came out and was shocked to know that Scott had a secret crush on him, and he started to excessively smile to cover up his true emotions. But he was obviously uncomfortable, and finally said that he was heterosexual. After the show, Scott, Donna and Jonathan went home together, and, nothing odd happened. But on March 9, 1995, Jonathan saw a construction light sitting by his door, with a note attached to it from Scott saying, You have the right tools to turn this on. At this very moment, Jonathan got so mad that he drove to bank to get money, and bought a gun and ammunition. Then he drove to Scott's mobile home and shot him twice in the chest. After doing this, he drove to a local gas station where he turned himself into the police through a payphone. He was taken into custody, and gave a full recorded confession to, the police. Since this case was a first of its kind, the authorities and court staff knew right away, that there was going to be 24-7 media coverage. The prosecution immediately wanted to charge Jonathan with first-degree murder, but many jurors, reporters, and viewers at home felt sympathetic for Jonathan, and angry at Jenny Jones and her talk show. The defense team argued that Jonathan suffered from, manic depression and Graves disease, and he felt humiliated in the show, and that's the reason for his violent behavior. The defense team also used the gay panic defense, as a part of their argument as well. Also during this trial, it had come to the surface about the kind of family dynamic Jonathan was raised in throughout his childhood. He grew up with a father who was very homophobic, abrasive, and abusive towards him. In 1996, 
Jonathan was found guilty of second-degree murder, and was sentenced to a minimum of 25 years, and a maximum of 50 years in prison. In 1999, the Amador family sued The Jenny Jones Show. During the trial, several of the producers of the show, and Jenny Jones herself testified, but for the most part, no one took much responsibility for this tragedy. After deliberation, eight out of the nine jurors, ruled in favor of damages, that the Jenny Jones show was responsible for reimbursing. Therefore, the judge decided to have the defendant award the Amador family, approximately $25 million in damages for Scott's death. Unfortunately, the family never saw a single cent, from this financial settlement, the Jenny Jones show was cancelled in 2003. And on August 22, 2017, Jonathan Schmitz was released from prison on good behavior after serving 22 years of his sentence. At the end of the day, this true crime has left a permanent mark on the entertainment industry, more specifically when it comes to reality and talk shows. The concept of ambush television is no longer used, since guests can no longer be on television shows without knowing exactly what they are going to do, or at least, a predictable idea of it. What do you think about this case? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.